Investigates exclusive. We are giving you an inside look at how drugs are smuggled into our jails, fueling a dangerous criminal enterprise. Our Mike Bodette obtained video from a state police undercover operation that's now raising even more questions about how this is happening. This is video obtained by five investigates through a public records request. It's from a state police hidden camera placed inside an elevator at Plymouth County Superior Court in Brockton. And it's revealing how drugs could be smuggled from the court into the Plymouth County Correctional Facility by inmates appearing in court. How big of an issue is this? It's a big issue. Joseph McDonald is the Plymouth County Sheriff. <laughs> The jail is constantly working to keep drugs from the outside getting inside, using everything from body scanning to this narcotics analyzer. Anytime somebody leaves the correctional facility and comes back, that's a concern, and that's historically been the biggest vector of contraband coming into the correctional facility. The video shows Christine Lausanne in the elevator. She ended up pleading guilty to a drug distribution charge and attempting to commit a crime and was sentenced to six months in jail. The state police report details what happened. Lausanne goes into the elevator and appears to retrieve an item from her chest area and place it in the railing. Then she knocks on the lockup door and asks for court officer Mark Bradley and they have a brief conversation. A few minutes later, another court officer, David LaRosa, enters the elevator with a food cart and an inmate. The inmate reaches behind to the railing and then puts something in his pocket. A week later, another undercover operation. Lausanne is back, and this time you clearly see her remove a package from her chest area and place it in the elevator railing. She returns to the lockup and asks for court officer Bradley, and they again have a brief conversation. Bradley then escorts inmate Fernando Owens into the elevator. Owens had been on trial for murder, but is not wearing handcuffs. He takes the package of narcotics, placing it in his pocket. He eventually goes back to his isolation cell, where he secreted the package of narcotics in his buttocks. Soon after, police moved in, and Owens agreed to voluntarily pass the narcotics package from his rectum. When you heard about this case, what did you make of it? Um highly concerned. Jeff Morrow was the director of security for the trial court who referred the case to the state police. That detainee should have been fully restrained. The entire event is, is contrary to our policies, our, our procedures, and somebody has to, watching this has to wonder if the court officer is involved. The trial court eventually fired three court officers, Mark Bradley, David LaRosa, and William Roach but they were never charged with a crime and deny any involvement. Five investigates first raised questions about the court officers last year after discovering they'd been on paid leave, collecting their $80,000 a year salaries for not working for more than four years. Is this an isolated incident? <sighs> this is the only situation I dealt with during my tenure that involved uh, the potential that officers were assisting others to bring contraband into the courthouse to be later smuggled into the jails of the prison. But Morrow is not naive. He knows there's a drug pipeline between the courts and the jails. This is one of the few opportunities an individual being held in custody uh, might have um, to come in contact with someone uh, where something can be received. All three court officers who were fired are in arbitration fighting to get their jobs back. Mark Bradley's attorney says the allegations that his client was involved with drug smuggling are, quote, completely ridiculous and says if he were involved, the district attorney would have charged him. William Roach's attorney says his client wasn't even working on the two days the state police captured hidden camera video in the court. We reached out to the union representing David LaRosa, but have not heard back. Mike Bodette. Five investigates. Warm.